My name is Albert Fisher III, actually, named after my dad and my grandfather. My name is Chris Fisher. I grew up on Martha's Vineyard. I'm the 12th generation, my dad's 11th generation Islander, born and raised. Raw bar is open. My hands are so cold. Now my dad's making fun of me. I'm not making fun of you. I'm quietly laughing to myself. Want the big one? I eat them both. Hmm. Raised on a very small farm in Chilmark. We love the act of getting food. Hey, ladies. Whether it's growing it, finding it. Hey! Is that right? There's something about providing for other people. Good chicken. Still warm. I hung out with my father on the farm. He taught me process of food and farm. And Dad would take me out hunting and fishing. One guy, I'll be posted over here. I mean, one guy in this path, one guy in this path, and then one guy should be down on the beach. What I loved was the outdoors is that you learn something new every day throughout your life. As I get older, it's a way that we stay connected. It's a way to remember those experiences, a way to check in and to be reminded that things don't change. You get older, you get tired, you get a little fat. <laughs> but you can go out and spend that time together and, and it's exactly the same. In the summertime, Beetlebung Farm was the centerpiece for our family. You catch it. There was times that four generations of our family would sit together and have lunch. Actually, there wasn't times. That was every day. We would sit down outside at the picnic table. I remember my grandmother leaning in and saying, everything that we are eating was brought up on the farm. You know, she homemade butter, you know, the strawberries out of the garden with the cream from the cows. That's when stories are told about somebody's childhood who's 100 years old to a seven-year-old. The vegetables, the lettuce, everything was fresh. And, and that's how I was brought up. I mean, that's how you share experiences. And that child is going to learn to value that as they get older. My grandmother's 100 years old. She owns what is now a very expensive piece of real estate in the center of a very affluent town, and the farm's worth a lot of money. We've run a farm stand off this property for the last 40 years. You can't pass on a legacy like that um, by running a farm stand. The family wants to get rid of the farm. They'd like to recoup some of that money. And I'd like to figure out how we can keep it in the family. One apple. Hey, girl. I got a banana with your name on it. The goal for Beetlebung Farm is um, to continue my grandfather's legacy creating a place in the community on the island that is a symbol of, of what's possible on a small piece of property that's managed properly. How are those? Don't eat my hand. That's what I'm hoping to uh, accomplish, keep the farm a farm. So let's start by shucking the oysters. All right. Because my dad always provided the food, for me, when I felt like I had become a man was when I learned how to cook. Because now I was bringing something to the table. 
How are we going to eat these? Those are going in the chowder. Oh, great. I'm very proud of all of my children. They're, they're great kids. They love to uh, be with me and hunt and fish with me, and, and uh, it's such a pleasure. The happiest I am in my life is to have all of my children sitting at the table. Getting together as a family, that's one of those experiences that you can't replace, just like experiences hunting and fishing with my dad as a kid. It's, it's those moments that create memories that then create stories that then create legacies. I wouldn't be farming or wanting to save our family's farm if I didn't know what made it so important to my grandfather in the first place.